It's now a couple weeks later and I'm ready to begin work. In this short period of time, I've also gotten a haircut and a cold, so bear with me. I acquired some quick jacks. These are the 5000 EXT, because the car's kind of got a long wheel base. I don't know if the SXT would have worked, but figured whatever, let's get the EXT. So today's mission will be to set these up and get the car lifted up by here and see how far I can get on the subframe. Since there's already a million videos on YouTube on how to set these up and people unboxing them, I'm just gonna do that off camera for the sake of time. Then I'll come back when they're all set up and just about ready to go up underneath the car. My only complaint is I think UPS mangled these boxes. These things are pretty tough, so I don't think there's any damage, but these were definitely not handled very well. So I'm hoping there's nothing missing or anything broken. If so, I'll have to bring them back or send them back, whatever. Last time I left off, I was unboxing and setting up the quick jacks. Because uh, I wasn't really feeling well, I didn't really want to set up that whole, or film that whole setup, and as I mentioned before, there's really not a whole point to do it because there's so many videos on how to set your quick jacks up. So I'll show you what they look like. There they are underneath the car, just as you'd uh, as you'd expect. I've got the hoses back here. It's a little little messy back here, but that's uh, not a not a big problem. Lifts the car up nicely, but for right now, I was focused on doing the valve cover. And you'll have to forgive me. I forgot my camera at home, so I'm using my Pixel 3 XL. So the quality of the videos, uh, it's okay, but the um. Uh, the voice or the sound, the mic, I really don't like the mic on this uh, phone whatsoever. So bear with me for like the next couple of minutes. I'll probably run home and get my DSLR in maybe about an hour or so. But I got the valve cover off, which I wanted to do to make sure that a whole bunch of pieces didn't get up in the top. From what I can tell, there's not a whole lot wrapped around the, um, the timing chain. There's not a whole lot of pieces throughout like um, throughout the, the valve area valve train area here I can't think right now and honestly the right way to do this repair is to remove the cam ledges and check the cam ledges for clearance and make sure like with a plastic gauge to make sure that the bearings haven't been uh, worn or the ledges haven't been worn if the motor was starved of oil for a long period of time I'm not sure if I mentioned this previously but when this when this uh, belt problem happened my buddy was driving the car I was uh, here actually at his place and we were doing brakes on his Jeep, so he had to leave. It was a bit icy. I didn't want him taking his bike, which is a very nice bike, and Ninja 650. So I said, just take my car. And I knew there was an oil leak on the belt, so I uh, was kind of wary about the whole snapping situation. Unfortunately, it did happen. Um, my mistake, failure to maintain. However, he told me it broke about 20 miles before he actually fully broke down, which was in my town. So he had continued to drive the car for 20 miles, and at, at that point, what will usually happen is, one, if normally if the belt snaps and you shut the car off right away, there's a really good chance that that belt's not going to go through the crank seal and get sucked into the motor. If you let it run, that's when the belt starts wrapping up around and will push its way through the back of that crank seal, or the front, eh, through the front of the crank seal. I'm not all that there today, guys. I'm sorry. And when that happens, it catches the timing chain, and the timing chain will eventually pull up and just shred the belt and it will get everywhere. The worst part is it gets up in that oil pickup tube and there's a little screen that's there so to filter out any big particles or stuff you really don't want circulating in your engine. Hey, like a belt. So when that pickup tube gets clogged, you lose oil pressure. And when you're losing oil pressure, your bearings are gonna wear, like your cams will wear, your, your uh, rod bearings, your crank bearings will wear very quickly, you can even spin. I did, I did start it up briefly, it did not sound like it was knocking or any type of weird noises um, after like uh, let it sit for a couple of days. Uh, it did have full oil, there is now a big oil leak from the crank seal obviously. So I'm very hopeful that there's, no, there's not going to be any bearing material in the oil pan when I do eventually pull it off. I'm going to open up the uh, oil filter here and I'm going to cut that out and see if there's any shiny metallic stuff in there. Probably won't be this video, probably the next video. This video is pretty much just going to not really end here, because what I will do is I'll shine a flashlight in there. We're going to take a good look at the timing chain, and I'm going to rotate the crank to see if any bits of belt come up. And the, the chain itself has a lot of tension on it right now. It's, it's tension pretty good, which leaves me to believe that the, the, uh, the chain guides did not crack, because sometimes when that belt gets wrapped around, these things can slip and they can crack. Um, the mechanical timing, I believe, is okay. I'll verify that as well. But for now, that's gonna be that's gonna be it until I rotate this crank. So I ran home, but I forgot to grab my camera like a moron. So just bear with me. I guess the rest of tonight will just be this uh, phone's camera. As you can see, I just kind of put a little 
garbage bag thing over the valve cover area now because I don't want any dust or dirt in there. I really did want to try to get the valve cover back on, but I'm going to tackle that as soon as the oil pan comes off. And the oil pan's on. I want to do the oil pan first just in case I do miss anything. I rotated the crank a couple times. It's a 22 millimeter. It's down there. If ever you're interested in just rotating your N54's crank. Also, I should mention, if you ever have to do a job like this, do not remove this bolt. I don't care what anybody tells you. That's uh, the crank hub. You mess up your whole timing. Timing will have to be all reset because it's... It's weird the way that they have that separate from the crank itself. Now anyway, I removed, or I started to unbolt the passenger side engine mount. And to do something like that, I had to come up with this crazy contraption. It's a 16. My only 16, surprisingly, is a half inch, which I don't know, I guess it came with my impact set. And I used a half inch swivel to another half inch swivel. Half inch extension to a three quarters with an upsizer, backwards reducer, whatever you want to call it. And my trusty old extend, extending three eighths swivel headed uh, extendable ratchet. So now that that side's all completely uh, ready to be pulled out on terms of engine mount and bolt thing, next I got to do this side. It's right underneath this um, one of these DCI intakes. Uh, I'm just going to drop an extension down. I don't think I'll be able to get it on on video, but down down in there somewhere, if you'll believe me, um, right underneath the steering column is actually where it's going to be. There is another motor mount, and I believe the top of it, you can just kind of see it underneath there. The top of that motor mount is a E14 bolt, so I don't know why they went with a 16 millimeter nut here like a regular nut you don't need any e-torx for it and then a e14 there so once i just crack that loose i'm going to install the engine support bar on there and then uh, tighten that up get those bolts removed so then the engine will pretty much be free of the subframe and once the engine's free of the subframe then i'll be able to go underneath there i'm going to take um, 36 mil i'm pretty sure it's the same with these axles as well remove the axle nuts then remove the wheels Maybe I'll remove the wheels first, then the axle nuts. Then I've got to disconnect the control arms, the some other bits of suspension, you know, the sway bar links, and uh, whatever else is under there. I don't know. I, I can't brain today. Uh, once that's all done, then I'll almost be ready to pull the subframe, with the exception, I believe the power steering fluid reservoir has to be drained first because the power steering rack is connected to the subframe. It's bolted there. So we really want to make sure that we get all that fluid out and not put any stress on those lines because that's just more hydraulic hoses and parts that I really don't want to replace. Now that both the engine mounts have been broken free, it's time to crack out this Pittsburgh um, Harbor Freight engine support bar, which I'm not really going to go over the setup. It's because, again, there's a billion videos on YouTube about how to set that up. However, I will mention, just in case you are wondering, the front tow hook that you'll find usually in your toolbox in the trunk is meant for this little hole here by the oil filter housing for um, when you need to support your motor. So you can just screw that on in there and then the engine support bar will go from that side here to the opposing side with the hook in here and then we'll tighten that up. Make sure the weight's all on the engine support bar. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove both mounts. Well, hey, look, there the DSLR is. I'm back, it's been another couple days. It's a Wednesday, it's after work. Um, was about 70 degrees almost today and it's dropped like another 10 degrees. It's quite windy out. Shorts were a bad idea with, but I brought my long socks because screw it, why not? I've got the wheels off now. I did a little bit more work. I just wanted to get stuff done and didn't really have time to film. Uh, so all the suspension's pretty much dropped that's connected to the subframe. Everything but the uh, tie rods. The outer tie rods, which I have a tool for to safely pop those off, because I don't want to damage them with like a pickle fork or anything. Also, just to make my life a little bit easier, stopped by the Happy Harbor and picked up a nice um, Earthquake XT. It was on sale for $239. Obviously comes with a battery and a nice case and a charger. Because my old Chicago Electric one rated for 300 foot-pounds of torque 
It's got me through a lot, but it couldn't get the lugs off, and I was doubting it would be able to get the axle nut off. The earthquake took the axle nut off like it was not even there. So maybe I'll film the earthquake with um, getting the axle nut off on the other side, because I gotta do that next. Well, it definitely took a while to get that axle nut unstaked. So now that it's unstaked, it's time to take it off. Let's see how the old earthquake handles this. Not too bad. Been on there for quite some years and took it off with really not too much trouble. Struggled a little at first, but a lot better than doing with a breaker bar.